I would like to invite our first presenter, Denise Hanna, is going to introduce Michelle Altman, who's going to present on diabetes education. Denise, come on up here. Good evening, everybody. I'm Denise Hanna. I am chair of the Health Access and Equity Task Force of VHC Health Foundation. Uh, I'm here just to uh, introduce our uh, initiative, our impact opportunity tonight, and that is targeted to controlling and even preventing type 2 diabetes in our most at-risk communities. Uh, I know from my vantage point, diabetes is running rampant in the U.S., and even in my own family, it's been a scourge on both sides. So with that, I think it's important to listen to the scientists that say medical care, as innovative as it is, is not enough to stem the spread of diabetes. We have to look at environmental factors, whether that's poverty or housing or nutrition. And that brings us to the reason I'm here. I am very pleased and honored to introduce to you all our first presenter, Michelle Altman. She is the Patient Care Director for Outpatient Diabetes and Nutrition at VHC Pediatrics Outpatient and Outpatient Infusion Center. Michelle? Thank you, Denise. We're gonna talk about diabetes today, and I'd like to start with a story. I'd like you to introduce you to Angelina. Angelina is a mother of children who is faced daily with her conflict of diabetes and struggling to make ends meet. Angelina is a patient in our clinic, and she often has to make the decision of whether or not to put food on the table or provide for her family. Imagine if you had to make that decision on a daily basis. I'm here to talk to you about how we can help Angelina, providing resources and education to help her manage her diabetes. Diabetes is all around us. As Denise mentioned, diabetes is prevalent in our society and it's getting worse. I'd like to do a little poll. So with a show of hands, please show if you know anyone that either has diabetes, a family, a friend, a neighbor, or maybe even you have diabetes. What's, so look around the room. Almost every hand is raised. So hopefully everybody can relate and understand when we talk about diabetes and the impact it has on our community. Diabetes is prevalent in our Hispanic population. This is the community that we most serve in our outpatient clinics, and we're gonna talk about that today. I manage two community clinics that provide services to low-income, uninsured patients. These patients are members of our community who strive every day to provide food for their families and make ends meet. Unfortunately, they don't make a lot of money. So every dollar counts when this is your annual income. What we want to do is we want to help these patients. We want to provide them with resources and education so that they can prevent and manage their diabetes. Diabetes is preventable. We want to help patients understand what they can do to improve their health. In our clinic, we provide care to patients that are working in the community. These people often work as Uber drivers, restu um, restaurant management, landscaping. They don't have a lot of time off. They can't afford to miss work. When they don't work, they don't get paid. And if you don't show up for work, the foreman's gonna find someone else to replace you with. Unfortunately, they don't have insurance, like many of us do, that can help us provide access to care. So it is a constant struggle for them to work and provide food for their family, and then also to be able to take care of their diabetes. So what do we wanna do? We want to set up a program to help raise awareness for diabetes and also to help patients manage their diabetes. We wanna meet them where they are. We wanna provide somebody that speaks the same language and they can provide education on the same level that they're accustomed to. We wanna help with specialty care visits, if any of you know, a diabetic usually has to see a foot doctor and an eye doctor. Just to get in the door for one of these specialty physician practices, if you don't have insurance, is between three to $400. These patients don't have that kind of money. So imagine having to go see that specialty. They're not gonna do it, they're gonna end up with complications, they're gonna lose their vision, they're gonna have problems walking. So we wanna be able to provide resources financially to help them with that. Let's talk about pregnant diabetic women. 
So if a woman is diabetic and she's pregnant, we're talking about two patients, the mom and the baby. We want that to be a healthy outcome. We want the mom and the baby to walk out of the hospital together as a family. If a baby has complications during pregnancy, they're gonna end up in the ICU. And the last thing we wanna do is separate a new mom from her baby if we can prevent it. When you're a pregnant diabetic woman, you have to check your blood sugar four times a day. These are the strips that you have to use to check your blood sugar. This little box can cause about, cost about $40. This box will last about a week for a pregnant woman. Again, think about disposable income, $40 a week for a pregnant woman. Someone like Angelina, that can be the cost of a meal for her family or checking her blood sugar. It's not that these women don't want to do it. They're just constantly struggling with how to care for their families. Diabetes is preventable, as I mentioned. We want to get in front of these patients and let them know what they can do to prevent their diabetes. We want to give them options, healthy options, so that they can eat the right foods. Think about the foods that we have available to us. If you're trying to feed a family and you want to fill them up, fast food, unfortunately, is the cheapest and most filling option. That's not what we want our patients to be eating, but sometimes that's all they can afford. Fresh fruits and vegetables are the most expensive thing in the supermarket. So think about what we can do to help our patients. We want to be able to provide them with fresh fruits and vegetables. So they don't even have to think about it. They can immediately have the foods they need to feed their families. What we want to do is we want to provide also cooking classes and we want to provide weight loss services. Not, all, not everyone can afford to join a gym, but we can bring the gym to them. So we want to bring in people that can help them show them healthy food habits to eat make healthy meals, and we can also provide exercise to them. What we know from children and obesity is that obesity is rampant right now in our youth, especially after the pandemic. Kids did not, were not active for two years, and they haven't gotten used to being active again. So overweight children lead to diabetes. And the research shows us that a child that is diagnosed as a diabetic is more likely to continue that into adulthood. So we need to prevent these children from becoming diabetics. How do we do that? with education, with healthy food, and exercise. We want to do that for these families. We want to bring the services to them, make it available to them, and put it in an environment that they can trust and feel comfortable. This is our ask. We are asking for $2 million. This will help our patients. This will help 1,000 patients. Diabetes is expensive. Diabetes prevention is expensive, but it is worse if the patient becomes a diabetic and has those complications later in life. With this money, we can not only help Angelina, but we can help a thousand more people. This is what we want. We want healthy members in our community. So please help us improve the quality of life for the members in our community. Thank you.